Pripyat was one of the youngest of all cities, built during the 1970s. But it was also destined to be the most short-lived. Nothing left Pripyat apart from its residents. They were permitted few possessions for fear of contamination. And as the rain poured down just days after the disaster, it brought even more radioactive dust back to the streets of the abandoned city. In the days following the disaster, a 30 kilometer radius of a post-nuclear badlands was established to isolate it from the rest of the world. This is the most contaminated land on the planet, land that will take thousands of years to become healthy again. But signposts and warnings don't keep animals out. The so-called zone of alienation became a magnet. But the legacy of its human past will influence the way the wildlife survives here for many years to come. For bears that come and go in and out of the zone, there are regular stop-offs at the empty buildings. Bears are inquisitive animals, and these old houses often contain something worth eating. This one has the kittens inside. They've been left alone while their mother is out hunting again. But their scent is strong, and the bear investigates, looking for a way up to where the smell is coming from. There's a stroke of luck for the helpless kittens. An old pot of jam. It distracts the bear just in time. And the kittens have a narrow escape. With the bear gone, the house is safe again. And the kittens continue to explore. Meanwhile, their mother, oblivious to the dangers her kittens have been facing, is doing what she does best, searching for food, always on the lookout for an opportunity. Chernobyl's bird life is often less contaminated by radiation than creatures that live on the ground. But it was a species of bird that showed a genuine case of mutation after the disaster. Some barn swallows produced white rather than red feathers under their chins. But it appears to have been unattractive to other swallows, and the mutation died out. Other mutations have been brief too. Mutants are often weaker and make easier targets for predators. Life in Chernobyl really is about survival of the fittest. As the cat travels through a surprisingly green post-nuclear landscape, it's hard to imagine this forbidden zone with a silver lining. But the resurrection of Chernobyl's wildlife was so unexpected that it left environmentalists heartened by nature's triumph over man's most terrifying and self-destructive of deeds. While she's making her journey, it's also time for the kittens to start fending for themselves. They make their first unaccompanied steps from the safety of the old house. They combine the spirit of adventure with a serious lack of experience, and it's extremely unlikely that they will have much success in finding anything to eat on their own. At best, they must try and stay alive. For the mother cat to have survived here, she must know where to hunt for food and how to stay out of trouble. She'll often take advantage of hunting in a confined space. Such a strategy takes her into the derelict buildings that were once the schoolhouse. 
Among the debris scattered around are the children's gas masks. Everything here has been left to gradually succumb to the sublime decay that only time can bring. And it has plenty of that. Every object adds to the eerie memories of a place once so full of life. Meanwhile, our young ones are still heading further away from the safety of the house. They've stuck together, moving as a little pack. But without their mother, they've no sense of the danger they may be heading into. She's still unaware of what the adventurous kittens are up to as she continues to patrol the old schoolhouse. Hundreds of Pripyat schoolchildren were forced to flee, leaving everything behind, their toys and books frozen in time. She scours the gymnasiums and kindergarten playrooms. These old buildings have remained a stronghold for the rodent population, with plenty of places to make a nest. Back on their own journey, the kittens are heading into open country making them even more vulnerable to attack. Not from predators lurking in the shadows of the old building, but anything that's watching from above. One of the most successful of hunters that now inhabit this place is the bird of prey. There are so many small mammals here that they've become incredibly successful. And the kitten makes an easy kill. As one of her kittens becomes prey, their mother is about to make her own kill. A small snake, just enough to keep her going. But as always, it brings another dose of radiation. After her journey, she's finally returned to the old house to check on her kittens. But she soon makes a disturbing discovery. She's returned home to find an intruder lurking around the family home. The lone wolf has finally reached the village and is starting to explore. The forest wolves seldom venture this far into what was once the human world. They're far too wary. But for our wolf, that could be an advantage. He must keep hidden from the other packs. And this might be just the place to do it. They play hide-and-seek through the fallen timbers of the old barn. This is her territory, and she knows every inch of it well. She manages to keep one step ahead of him. She won't be able to keep the wolf from the door for much longer. His persistence pays off, and he manages to get into the house. If they stay high, he'll never be able to reach them. The mother cat leads by example and keeps her nerve. While she's here to watch out for them, they'll have the best chance of staying alive. Eventually, he gives up the search, but he's found a new home. Next, he'll need to find a mate. 
While he's gone for now, he'll almost certainly be back.